Hi there. Welcome back to the video series of deploying production ML models with TensorFlow Serving. My name is Wei, and I'm a developer advocate at Google. In our last episode, we showed you how to send prediction requests to TF Serving in Python and C++. In this episode, we're going to discuss how to customize TF Serving for your needs. TensorFlow Serving is a flexible serving system that comes with many features. While it is easy to get started with, TensorFlow Serving also supports many additional features that you can leverage. For example, you can customize the model server by passing optional flags to it or use Prometheus to monitor TensorFlow Serving. And if you have implemented custom operators for TensorFlow training, you can bring them over to TensorFlow Serving as well. TF Serving also seamlessly works with Kubernetes to scale with demand. Let's start with model server configuration. TF Serving allows you to set different flags when you start the model server. Here we are setting the model config file and the wait time to pull the config file in the command line. You can find all the flags in the model server source code. Feel free to check them out. We'll also be talking about a few more of them in future episodes, such as model warmup, batching, and XLA. Coming back to the model config file, here's an example. We specify two models and their corresponding names, paths, and platforms. By default, TF Serving serves the model with the largest version number. But if you want to serve a specific version of the model, you can set model server policy to specific and provide the version number you would like to use. So here, we ping version 42 as the one to serve. This is useful for rolling back a known good version in case a problem is discovered with the latest version. We can also serve multiple versions at the same time. This would be useful for A-B testing. Going one step further, you can assign labels to different model versions. Here, we assign stable to version 42 and canary to version 43. Without version labels, we need to specify the version number in the endpoint when sending requests. With version labels, we can just specify the label in the endpoint. This makes it easy for our clients to do A-B testing since you don't want to constantly update your client logic. In our A-B testing scenario, once you are happy with the Canary version, you can promote it to Stable. Here, we are promoting version 43 from Canary to Stable. And if for some reason, version 43 turns out not to be stable enough, we can easily roll back to 42 from version 43. So overall, TF Serving has built-in functionality to support basic A-B testing. In any production machine learning system, monitoring is critical because it provides visibility into your system and helps you identify potential issues early on or backtrack past events in postmortem. One of the most commonly used monitoring tools is Prometheus. We will not go into details about Prometheus, but you should check out their website to learn more. TensorFlow Serving has built-in support for Prometheus. Let's see how this works in action. We first need to create a configuration file to enable metric logging from TensorFlow serving side. Next, we specify this monitoring config file when starting the model server. Next, we create another configuration file for Prometheus. Note, here we specify localhost and 8501 port as the target since that's what TF Serving is using. Now we start Prometheus Docker image with a configuration file we have just created. Of course, you could use Docker Compose to start both TF Serving and Prometheus at the same time, but that's beyond the scope of this video. Feel free to learn more about Docker Compose in Docker documentation. Now we can open localhost 1990 in the browser to see Prometheus UI. If you use a client to send a few requests to TF Serving now, you will be able to see that Prometheus is able to capture metrics and display them in the UI now. There are a number of metrics TF Serving and Prometheus can capture. 
You can check out this source file to find the ones you are interested in and their specific meaning. Moving to our next topic today, custom ops. While TensorFlow and TensorFlow Serving have built-in support for more than a thousand operators now, new ops keep coming up as machine learning researchers invent new architectures and new ops. If you have invented a new custom op for training with TensorFlow, you need to bring them over to TensorFlow Serving for inference. Let's walk through an example. We first copy the custom op source code here. Here we're using the zero out custom op from TensorFlow repository as an example. We'll create a Bazel rule to build the static library from the source files. Next, we need to rebuild the model server with a custom op linked in. So we need to add it in the model server build file. Now we can build the TF serving model server. We can start the model server as before. And lastly, we can send a post request to test it out. The last thing we are going to talk about is Kubernetes integration. TensorFlow Serving works seamlessly with Docker and Kubernetes to scale with demand. We have a pretty detailed tutorial to walk you through how to set up a TF serving Kubernetes cluster on Google Cloud. We won't go into details today, but feel free to check it out in the resource link below. It should be a similar process for your own Kubernetes cluster on-prem or on other cloud platforms. So to summarize, today we learned how to configure the TF serving model server how to do monitoring, and how to support custom ops. We also briefly touched upon Kubernetes. In our next episode, we are going to discuss how to tune TF-serving performance. See you next time.